anything else than what it is. And I want to say to this, it is so, so important that we don't build on our experience. Uh, my experience have changed. I was deceived in the Lutheran Church. And some of you have never been in a state church religion as the Lutheran and Catholic Church with a baby Baptist. And in Europe, it's all over Europe, but in America, you don't see it. People from America, they're like, think we are crazy. How can you believe in baby baptism? Uh, because we grew up in it. We knew nothing else. And because we grew up in it and knew nothing else, it seems so right. But they looked at you and like, how can you believe baptism is just a symbol? Well, how can people believe baptism is just a symbol? Uh, because we grew up in it and we knew nothing else. And this is the power tradition. I would say the Lutheran Church and Catholic Church are more correct in their theology, but they are wrong in the practice. In, their pre in America, we are right in the practice, but very wrong in the theology. And, and that is how it is today. But I would say don't build on experience. Experience can change overnight. Build on the word of God. And for, as I said before, I've been deceived one time with the Lutheran Church. I got half deceived in a non-denomination, non non independent free church, because it was only half gospel. I've been deceived so many times by people and church and traditions. And I came to a point, I, I just, I, I need to read myself. I need to study the word myself. And I hope that the same will happen to you, that you not only take my word for it, but you will take time to see the scriptures we are going to go to, read it yourself, come to your own conclusion. And uh, that's why we have got this book here, the Bible. If you look at Baptist regeneration, the word regenerated means born again. You're being regenerated. Baptist regeneration was actually something they believed the first 1500 years of the church. The practice of how it looked changed overnight. Like baptism had been a crazy journey, like from, from immersion, they still do in the Greek Orthodox church, they still do immersion. Why? Because baptismal be, means immersed. And, and we are not translate the word with immerse. We are just wrote, write the word. Like other words we re, re, translate to English, but baptism is one of the few verses and few words in the Bible we have not translate. Otherwise it should be immersed, 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 or plumbed down in water. But we have put a word in called baptism. It's just a, not a word for baptismal. But the first 1500 years, they believed in Baptist regeneration. But in the context of safe, 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 I'm going to come back to that. Um, but the practice have changed. It became immersed still in the Greek church. In the Greek Orthodox church, if, if you say that they, they read Greek and because they read Greek and not English, they know that baptism is immersion. That's why they baptize immerse babies. Three times, actually. But baby baptism was not something that started in the beginning. It came like 300 years after Christ. It came a little more into the church and around 500, it became the normal practice. So Peter did not grand baptize his babies and his grandkids did not get baptized and Peter's grand grandkids did not get baptized and grand 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 grandkids did not get baptized and grand 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 grandkids and we had to go like seven eight generation where people suddenly hey let's baptize babies. So if we had to go eight generation to do some change our mind in something, I would say it is off. Go back to the foundation. Go back to the root. Go back to the beginning. But baby baptism came in later there. It was immersion in the beginning and then now it's baby baptism still with sprinkling of water on the head. And we're going to look a little about it later. Um, but uh, that was one thing. Another thing with baptism, it have changed a lot. Like at one time, they baptized people right away as we see in the Bible. But then later it came in less... Let, let's wait, they have to fast one or two days before they have to be baptized and let's wait it up. And, and it actually came in with a practice that if you sin after you're being baptized, you are lost. So they waited to the very end to be baptized. That was why Constantine, he got baptized on his deathbed, like before he died, he got baptized. 
So there have been practice going in the church, baby baptism and sprinkling and waiting with baptism and early baptism and late baptism. And, and, and of course, why do they baptize early baptism with babies in the state church religion? like the Lutheran and Catholic Church, because you cannot have a state church where everyone is member without babies being baptized. Uh, that's where the money comes in. Um, so there's a lot to say about it, but Baptist regeneration, the Catholic Church, there came a lot of mystery in at the same time, like holy water. The priest should baptize and and say special words and, and pray over people. So baptism was coming away from the simple faith where everyone can baptize in the homes, middle of night, wherever, to became a church thing, a holy thing, only in the Catholic Church. And without being baptized in the Catholic Church, you are not saved. And that's why there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church, as they said. Martin Luther went against that some of it, against some of the lies of the Catholic Church and the mystery under the baby baptism. But he did not reform the baptism at all. So we ended up with the Lutheran baptism that is similar, much similar to the Catholic baptism. And we end up with a new state church. The Anabaptists later, the Anabaptists being rebaptizers, they went against those lies and, and they came to America and, and therefore America is very different than Europe because America is not founded on a state church religion. So we don't have a lot of baby baptism here the same way as we have in Europe, but it's still there. But uh, there is Bibles, Bible verses about uh, baptism. Uh, Peter's, uh, the baptism save us. We see it. We, we see it. We see it in 1 Peter 3, 21. Baptism that now save you. So, so some of the things that said about baptism is actually correct. Some of the verses they use is correct. Baptisms, baptism that now save you. Baptism is not just a symbol. It's not, it's not just an outward sign for inner faith. And it's not a public confession from your inner faith or your faith. Baptism is much more as they say in the Lutheran and the Catholic Church, but the practice is so off. The practice are so off. We don't baptize babies on other people's faith. People need to come to faith, they need to repent, and then they can be baptized. When I say that they, they, what they teach, are, I don't say it's completely correct, because yeah, it is correct that the baptism that now save us, as Peter is saying, is it correct what the Bible says that baptism was a way of sins? It is correct that it's forgiveness of sins, what Peter is saying in, in, in Acts 2, 38. But there where people go wrong is when we look at what salvation is. First thing, as I said in last video, we are not saved from hell. We are saved from our sins. More about that, see our last video about repentance. But that salvation is not a horizontal salvation like this, where like, what moment are you saved? Like that second, I am saved, fully born again, have everything. It can go fast. It can go fast. It can happen the same day. It can happen the same hour. <laughs> Most of this. Most of it. Not at all. But salvation is more like a, a horizontal road like this. It's not a horizon, it's horizon. It's not that second, it's a road of salvation. It's like this. Salvation in the Bible is always written in, a, in three tenses. In the past tense, we were saved. In the, in the uh, past tense, in the present tense, we are being saved. And the future tense, the one who hold on to the end shall be saved. We were saved, we are being saved, and we shall be saved. And in that journey, baptism come in, and you need to understand it. Um, before we look a little more about baptism, I just need to, to, to say that baptism now save us is not only Peter who said that is not only what we see there. If you look at Jesus' words in John 3, 
Verily say, I say to you, except a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And except a man are born out of water, or born from above, is the translation, out of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The one who is born in the flesh is flesh, the one who is born in the spirit is spirit. Uh, marvel not when I say to you, you must be born again. The first 1500 years of church history, everyone who read that knew that Jesus was talking about baptism in water. You need to be born again out of water and spirit, or you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. People knew that for 1500 years. But then it changed and people came in and said, no, 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 it's actually talking about you know, because it's later talking about the flesh and the natural thing. So they said that what Jesus was saying there is that out of water is the natural birth. But if Jesus was saying that, he was a very, 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 very bad communicator. Because people have misunderstood him for 1500 years. And I would say people just read the Bible, understand it without religious glasses. They will think there's something off. Of course, Jesus is not talking about the natural birth here. Listen, here. some people say that it's the natural birth he's talking about. I say to you, except a man is born of water. And they say that that is the natural birth. The baby is in the water. The baby come out of water. And spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <laughs> but... So Jesus should say, except a man is born in the natural way by his mom and with the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Try, try to think of that. Jesus said, except a man is born natural by his mom and with the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Like it's possible to be born, baptized with the Spirit without being born again, born natural. Like Jesus would ever speak to anyone who was not born natural. Every person Jesus would ever meet and every person we will ever meet are already born natural. Out of them all. They're already born natural. So Jesus would say, it, it makes no sense. It's like I say to you who have seen this video. Uh, if you want to be born again and enter into the kingdom of God, you need to do two things. First thing, you need to be born by your mom. Okay? And then you need to be born by the Spirit. So, first born by your mom and then be born by the Spirit. And then you can enter into the kingdom of God. It makes absolutely no sense. I could just say, everyone who sees this video, you need to be born by the Spirit. I can just leave the whole water thing out of it. Why? Because everyone who sees this video, everyone who ever see this, this video are already born in the natural. It makes no sense. You have to study theology many years to really see this. <laughs> Get the religious glasses on you. No, uh, Jesus was preaching. You need to be born out of water. That is baptism in water and spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. But again, we have problem with this, but so, so with salvation and, and water, because is it not faith and repentance that is saving? Uh, where do water come in? What about the spirit? Like, because some of us have different experiences. Some, some had a strong, strong conversion and faith and got a new heart and and stop there and think is it i met god i have it all i feel a change i'm not the same my life have changed without water and without the holy spirit baptism i was there one time other people then experience the holy spirit first and say whoa no 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 you need to repent and believe and you need the holy spirit without having experience with water and don't understand where water didn't come in because they already feel so changed and they heal the sick and preach the gospel. Order, repent and get baptized. Yeah, I'm so changed. I'm so changed, but have not experienced the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So they don't understand where that come in. Again, when you see salvation as 
that road that leads to eternal life. You will see where everything fits in. And that was the early church, when they were preaching the gospel, they did not have a New Testament. Remember that they were only had an Old Testament, so they were preaching out of the Old Testament. And out of the Old Testament, they were preaching, and there they used a very, very clear picture. Israelite. The Israelites was slave in Egypt. And the Israelites were slave in Egypt. And they, Moses came, there's a picture of Christ, and said, let my people go. And there are a picture of we slave in this world, and Pharaoh is a picture of Satan. And by the blood of the lamb, there's a picture of Christ, the firstborn died. We had Passover. That's our communion now. Passover, that death passed over. And death did not go into that house and kill the firstborn. Why? Because of the blood. And because of that blood, they were saved out of Egypt. And they came out rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. We are saved. We are saved. We are saved. Were they saved? Yes, they were saved. But short time after, they stopped rejoicing. Why? Because the old life, the Pharaoh regret, and he sent his army after them. And then suddenly, oh no, we are dying, we are dying, we are dying. Oh no, we are dying, we are going to die. What happened? They needed salvation one more time. First time they got saved out of Egypt. Now they need to get saved from Egypt. How did they get saved from Egypt? From the Egypts who came after them? Through the baptism. They went down in the water and came on the other side. And when the old life followed them, it was drowned. The old life did not follow them up again. The old life did not follow them up again. So they were saved. They rejoiced. They were saved. They were saved. They were saved. And they could say that the baptism saved them. Did the baptism save them? The baptism to Moses truly saved them from that old life. The blood of Jesus saved them out of this world. The baptism saved them from that old life. But it's connected. Like we are never meant to just divide it up like that. It's, it's, it's connected. But they came out there rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. But most people who rejoiced, they died. They did not enter into the promised land as a picture of enter into the kingdom. They did not enter into the promised land. They were they were slain in the desert and they died. Why? Because they needed to walk by the spirit, the pillow of light, the pillow of the cloud or the pillow of light. They should walk by that, but they didn't. They went wrong. They did not get transformed the way they, was, they should. And they died. And all of this is written for us who live today, 1 Corinthians 9 and 1 Corinthians 10 as a warning who live today. So here we see salvation in they got saved out of Egypt by the blood. They got saved from the old life in the water and they should walk in by the Holy Spirit and enter into the promised land. There is a picture of being saved. And that was what we read with the verses we have. I have verses here actually. Ephesians 2, 8. Let's take that. We heard that before. For by grace you have been saved through faith. You have been saved. Present tent. In the past tent, sorry. Have been saved. Why? When we repented and we believed, we were saved. But that is not enough. 1 Corinthians 18 said, in the 1 Corinthians 1, 1 18 says, for this message of the cross is foolish for those who perish, but for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So here we see again, we are being saved. How are we being saved? One of it is putting off the old life uh, in the water baptism and, 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 and getting rid of that old life and being saved from our sins. And then the Romans 13, 11 um, and do this understanding the presence. Okay. The hour have already come for you to wake up for your slumber because our salvation is near now than when we first believed. So here we read that our salvation is closer now than when we first believed. 
Um, and this is what, what we see, that salvation is from sin. It's not from hell, it's from sin. You got saved out of this world. You got saved by putting off the old life and the one who cling on to the end shall be saved. And I actually have a whole video about this, uh, the road to salvation. Uh, I can just write it here, uh, where, where you can see the link. Uh, I'll put the link in, in the description and then you can go in and see the road to salvation because uh, there's so much more there and, and, and so on. But, but here, by the blood saved out of Eden from the baptism in the Red Sea, saved from our enemies, but is the one who stand firm to the end who shall be saved. And this is the thing. So people get it wrong when, when I say that baptism now save you because they think like baptism in itself do all things. No, no, repentance, faith is part of it. Repentance, faith is granting you a new heart. It's coming out of this world. But baptism is putting of the old life and into Christ. So you get saved out of this world and then you put off the old life and into Christ. And then we will the walk the walk by the Holy Spirit we shall receive and the one who cling on to the end shall be saved. So uh, I know it's already been an hour, but uh, we need to continue here. Um, so now let's let's look at the Bible. Let's take a time where we forget a little about our upbringing, our tradition, where we come from. Let's, let's let the word speak for itself. And then I, I, I would look at the cross. Uh, what about the rub on the cross? What about Paul? What about those? I'm, just relax. I will put up, look at those verses later. But let's start with some of the other verses and see it as it is. So we will start to go through the book of Acts. And book of Acts, we are going to look at their, what they said, and we are going to look at their practice when it comes to baptism. Acts 2.38. Peter, they asked, what shall we do? There was talk in their heart. They cried out. And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And a few verses further down, those who accepted his message, those who received the gospel, <laughs> were baptized and about 3,000 was added to the church that day. What can we see out of these words? Repent and baptism is connected. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. There was something Martin Luther did not understood. He did not combine baptism and repentance because babies cannot repent. He said baptism and faith and said, can babies believe? And I would say not, not, but how do you argue against that? He said, yeah, but a baby can believe. They cannot just confess it, but they can believe. Uh, so repentance and baptism are together. For forgiveness of your sins, it was what he said. It sounds more like the Lutheran Church, don't it, and the Catholic Church than it do our Pentecostal and Baptist churches. I'm just reading Bible. For the forgiveness of your sins. We don't hear that so much today. If I just wrote, hey, baptism can forgive your sins. People are going to fight against me and call me a heresy. I just read what the word was saying. But again, remember context, salvation. You get saved, you get saved, you get saved from what? From our sins. And, and baptism is not in itself what saves you, it's part of salvation. It's a part of salvation together with repentance and faith. It's, it's not the lies in the Catholic Church that itself it saved. No, it's part of salvation. It's part of the Israelite by the blood was saved out of Egypt. But they needed to walk through the baptism to be saved. Otherwise, that salvation out of Egypt was a short salvation because then the old life would come and take over again. 
they needed to put off the old man in that water. And this is what we see today. Repentance and faith is not enough. Repentance and faith without baptism do that. You repent, you get a new heart, you want to live the right life, but you will fall down in sin again. You go back to the old life. The sin will start to creep in. And that was what I experienced in my life. I experienced a freedom, a change of heart. I love Jesus. I was running around telling about Jesus. I got a new life. But short time after, it was like the old life started to creep in again. I started to fight with sins. I, I felt sin was taking over in my life again. And, and, and I started to almost live like a double life. I was not free. But what happened? When baptism came in, I finally put off that old life and understood what it meant. And in that second, I was free. I got saved again. I got saved from the old life. So we read here repentance and faith. You know, repentance and baptism are connection, connected. We read that it's forgiveness of sins and we read it happened the same day. It happened the same day. And this is what we see. No one before the cross got baptized like you and me today. Why? Because there was no baptism to Christ. No one received the Holy Spirit before the cross. I'll talk about that next lesson. But after the cross, Jesus died, rose up again, went to him, sent his Holy Spirit here. And after the cross, when the early church, the church was founded, the Holy Spirit was poured out and there was preached in the gospel, the response we see is always baptism. And, and you will see that very, very clear. Every time there is a clear example of what actually happened, they got baptized the same day. If we go to Acts 8, uh, we read about Philip in Samaria. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both man and woman. They were baptized, both man and woman. When they believed, they were baptized. And we read here, they, later you can read how they have not yet received the Holy Spirit. So, so when the apostle came down, they laid hands on them and there they received the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, what can we read there? We can read again that when they believed the proclamation of the good news, they were baptized. The response they gave to baptism, you know, to the gospel was baptism. And that was the same day as we read before in Acts 2. Why complicated? The gospel, the way the gospel is being preached is in a way where the way people respond with baptism. We also see here in Acts 8 that being baptized in water is not the same as being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Here they already were baptized in water, but they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. It just happened later when they came and laid hand on them. And, and we had, I just gave out a video now, a powerful video of deliverance. And there I've actually prayed for a girl who had been baptized, but she did not receive the Holy Spirit when she got baptized. So I came and we prayed for her and there she received the Holy Spirit and freedom. So, Let's move on. The same chapter, we can read of Philip and the eunuch. That the, uh, Philip, he came and he made the eunuch on the road. And he was preaching the gospel of Christ to him. And then while the eunuch was hearing the gospel, he responded, Look, here's water. What can hinder me in being baptized? And they went, walked down in the water and Philip baptized him right away. So here we see, we don't see exactly what Philip was preaching directly, but you see the response he got. And what was the response? The sinner's prayer? No. The sinner's prayer asked his into a heart is 150 years old. He came with Moody and Finney and the Four Laws and uh, 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 Crusades of Christ, or what, Candace Crusade of Christ and Billy Graham and all of them later. Ask Jesus into your heart is what most people do. Sinner's prayer what most people do, but it is not a biblical thing. In the Bible, the response they gave was, that's water, can I get baptized? 
And it was the same day again. Where do you see that? How many churches do you know where they actually preach a biblical gospel, where the response to the gospel is getting baptized and they do it the same day? Most churches are not preaching a biblical gospel. Why? And for you all critic out there and say, hey, Tom, you're preaching a false gospel. I would say to you, okay, are you preaching a right gospel? If you're preaching a true gospel, you are the response you should get to your gospel should be a biblical response with being baptized right away, like X2, like X8 here. If you preach a gospel and people don't get baptized right away, you're not preaching a biblical gospel. Yeah, but First Corinthians 1, 17, Paul sent me not to preach, but to, not to baptize, but preach the gospel. Don't use scripts against scripture, especially when it's taken out of context. And we're going to come back to First Corinthians, uh, Corinthians 1, 17 later. But this is the thing. We all been deceived. We all grow up in church of denomination where we are preaching a half gospel. And today, salvation like repentance, and faith, and baptism, water, Holy Spirit come over many years now and not the same moment, the same day as it should be in the Bible. But what can we learn out of Philip here in Acts 8? The response to the gospel should be baptism. So when you are finished preaching a gospel, and you say to them, what will you do now? The response should be, I'll get baptized. And it happened the same day. If you go to Acts 8, in Acts 9 now, we can read about uh, Saul. That uh, Saul's example, uh, how he was on the road and he saw light and, and so on. And uh, we read that Saul... Um, that Ananias came to him and prayed for him and uh, scales failed from Saul's eyes and he could see again. And he said, he got up and was baptized. So Saul, he got healed and right away he got up and was baptized. So simple. Right away. He, he, had, not been, he had been fasting three days without water and food. He was tired in his body. But right away he got up and got was got up and was baptized again right away in x 22 16 you can read ananias more details where ananias actually said to him get up be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of jesus or calling on his name here you see the closest you come to a sinner's prayer everyone who call on the name shall be saved if you confess Jesus, you shall be saved. When did they call on the name? When did they confess Jesus? Get up, be baptized, wash away your sin, calling on his name. So call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. This is how they did it. Being baptized. What we also see here in, in Acts 22, 16 is wash away your sins. Have you been in church, seen baptism, where they said, okay, um, let's, uh, everyone, we are, and we are baptizing now, you now for the forgiveness of your sins, and we are going to wash away your sins. We don't hear that, but those two things was just a quote from X2 and X, X22. Forgiveness of sins and wash away your sins. I'm just saying what the Bible is saying. If you have a problem with that, then talk with the author, author of the book. Talk with God about it. It was him who, who got it down here. It was not me. But it's so interesting. Wash away your sins. Forgiveness of sins. Two different ways of saying much of the same thing. And it was really in line. I'm going to look at it later. But there wasn't a way of sins. It's so much in line with Peter. If you go to Peter's letter, and, and now it was Ananias who said it to Paul. Peter was not saying, but Peter is saying almost the same, that baptism symbolizes, the water symbolizes the baptism that now save you. Not a removal of dirt of the body, but a clean conscience or pledge of a clean conscience toward God. So baptism is not a removal of dirt. 
It's not dirt your washing away. Your washing away is something else that is giving you a clean conscience toward God. What is it you need to wash away that give that that hinder you in having a clean conscience? Your sins. When your sins is washed away, you have a clean conscience toward God. And this is Peter, and we're going to look at that later. So, so what they were preaching, acting, and doing was also what they were teaching. We have a problem with it. Why? Because how can water wash away sins? The only reason you have a problem with that is because you had a Greek mindset and not the, 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 the biblical mindset, the, the mindset they had in the early church. We, in our Greek way of thinking, have divided the spiritual and the physical from each other. Something is holy and special and something is not. Like that is just human thing. But in the way of, in the Bible, God again and again and again used physical things to judge the world. For example, the water, Noah. He used the tree of life. The tree of life in the garden was a physical tree, but have a spiritual impact. Communion is a physical thing with a spiritual impact. So, so we see examples in the Bible where physical things have a spiritual impact. And God had used water many times to kill the Egypt. He had used water to judge the world. And he used water with Naaman. Just an example in Second Kings, you read about there was a guy called Naaman who had leprosy. And he sent a servant to, uh, uh, to the prophet and the prophet, prophet said to him, that Naaman should go and dip himself seven times in Jordan and he would be free. When he heard that, like, no, no, why? And then we read here, uh, Naaman's servant went to him and said, my father, it is the prophet who told you to do the, those great things. Will you then have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be cleaned? And then he went down and dipped himself in Jordan seven times as, a, as the man of God told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like a young boy. You can read in 2 Kings 5, 13, 14. What happened here? Naaman had leprosy. He sent a servant to the man of God, to the prophet. He said, Go and dip yourself seven times in Jordan, you'll be free. He argued against it in the beginning. He was angry. His servant said, Father, but the prophet, if the prophet had said you should do great things, you have done it. How much now when he just said, was and be clean? So he came to his senses in the end and he went down and did the simple thing God had told him to do. To be baptized, not to dip down in the water. And when he did it, he was cleansed by leprosy. God used this water to together with his faith and he was cleansed by leprosy. If God can clean somebody by leprosy, there is a picture of sin in the Old Testament. Can God not use water in New Testament to clean us from our sins? Of course he can. Of course he can. And this is what he's doing. It was not the water that was magical because many people with leprosy have been swimming in the same water before Naaman and after Naaman. And they did not get cleansed. And that's the problem with the Catholic Church. They make it like a mystery, like a, the special water and a special priest. No, it's not about that. You can get baptized in a rainwater container or garbage can or in an ocean or sea or water, no bathtub. It don't matter where you get baptized. It's your faith, heart of repentance and your faith you put into it. So here, just an example here, how with Naaman, that this is in the Bible. If you say today that God cannot use water to wash sins away, you, sorry, but you make God a liar. You you have a problem. You need to repent. Otherwise, you, you should also say that God cannot use water to cleanse Naaman. 
Do you really believe that? Do you really say that a God? No, no, God, he did not. He cannot use the water to cleanse anything. Then you have a problem. I believe what the Bible says. Because I don't have a Greek mindset. I understand that God, he can use it. If he chose to use it that time, he did it. If he chose to use it today, he do it. Let God be God. Just do like Naaman. Come to your senses. Stop. Yeah, but it's too easy or too simple. Just obey him. Do what you are called to do and you experience the freedom of it. But let's move on. X10. We were in X9, X8, X9. Now we're in X10. The house of Cornelius. And uh, Peter came to the house of Cornelius and uh, and he was preaching and suddenly the Holy Spirit came over those Gentiles. And he was shocked because he was surprised. Can they receive the Holy Spirit like, like us? And then we read here, sure, he said here was um, chapter 10, verse 20, 47. Surely no one can stand in the way of them being baptized in water. Now they have received the Holy Spirit like us. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What we see here is that they first received the Holy Spirit. And then they got baptized in water. It is possible to receive the Holy Spirit first and then get baptized afterward. The repentance do one thing, baptism do another thing, the Holy Spirit do a third thing. Some people get baptized, repent first and then receive the Holy Spirit. But it don't mean that they don't need to get baptized in water. Why? Because you can have the Holy Spirit and still cling on to your old life. And experience that that old life is killing your life, new body. And you, you, you cannot enter into that new world, new kingdom with your old body hanging on to you. You need to bury that old body. So here's just another example of it. How, um, how it looks. And what we also see here is that they got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's always in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It's never in the name Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Why? Why? Jesus is saying, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But he say in the name, not in the names. In the name. What is the name? That name is Jesus, the name above all names. We don't cast demons out saying, name Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come out. We don't heal the sick, say, name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. No, we say the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Baptism, we die for sin, we get buried, and we rise up again. That is the cross. Jesus died, he got buried, and he rose up again. It was the son who died for us. The name above all names. And that is who we repent toward God the Father. We get baptized. Bye-bye.